Hello, my name is Sean Morrison and I'm a specialist continence and women's health physiotherapist or pelvic floor physio. I'm the director of women's and men's health physiotherapy in Melbourne. I have a special clinical interest in male pelvic floor dysfunction. Urinary incontinence is a common problem for men after surgery for prostate cancer and it can have a huge impact on quality of life. It's often called post-prostatectomy incontinence or PPI and it occurs following radical prostatectomy for the most common male cancer, prostate cancer. PPI can be a mild problem, needing pads to manage it for only a few weeks, or more severe and requiring protective pads for up to a year. When incontinence surgery, in the form of either a sling or artificial sphincter, is usually offered. The pelvic floor, as we know, is a round layer of muscle at the base of the pelvis. The muscles in men support the pelvic organs, the bladder and the rectum, and they provide voluntary control of the bladder and bowel. The pelvic floor muscles also play a role in gaining and maintaining erection. Some of the muscles that control the bladder are removed with radical prostate surgery. Based on the way female urinary incontinence has been treated, strengthening the levator ani portion of the pelvic floor has been the mainstay of conservative management of PPI for the last 10 to 15 years. However, recent research has enhanced our understanding of the male continence mechanism and the best way for us to teach pelvic floor exercises. This is thanks to physios Professor Paul Hodges at the University of Queensland and Dr Patricia Newman at UniSA. Etiology of post-prostatectomy incontinence is quite complex. Male continence is maintained by a combination of factors, including the mucosa, smooth muscle sphincters, the prostate itself, the striated urethral sphincter muscles at the level of the pelvic floor, and the levata ani, particularly the puborectal sling, which elevates the bladder neck. These striated muscles combine to increase urethral closure pressure whenever intra-abdominal pressure increases. The most common cause of post-prostatectomy incontinence is intrinsic sphincter deficiency. And this is when the urethral closure pressures are insufficient to prevent leakage. Typically, this happens when men get up from a chair, when they're walking, talking, bending, coughing, etc. Detrusor overactivity can also be a contributing factor. It might be pre-existing or it can occur de novo after surgery. A detailed subjective assessment, preferably preoperatively, is essential and it ensures identification of pelvic floor muscle risk factors and pre-existing lower urinary tract or bowel symptoms that might impact on the post-operative recovery. Baseline measures of bladder function should be obtained pre-surgery using a bladder diary. Understanding each man's lifestyle and general exercise habits also assists in setting realistic post-operative goals. It's best if men can have an objective assessment of their pelvic floor muscle function, preferably with a pelvic floor physiotherapist. This ensures that they can learn the correct technique. Unlike women who are educated about their pelvic floor muscles during the childbearing years, men often don't realise that they even have a pelvic floor muscle. Assessment has traditionally involved a digital rectal examination, but this focuses attention on the anal sphincter and the posterior aspect of the levator ani muscles, which are really not important in urethral closure. More recently, pelvic floor physios have begun to assess the pelvic floor using real-time transperineal ultrasound. Now this allows the physio and the man to see all of these striated muscles involved in maintaining continence in action. This is a really exciting assessment technique, which has some obvious advantages, particularly its powerful visual biofeedback. However, it doesn't provide an assessment of pelvic floor muscle tone, and this can be important. Recent Cochrane reviews are suggesting that pelvic floor muscle training for post-prostatectomy incontinence may help when commenced preoperatively. But the results of studies done postoperatively and focusing simply on strengthening the pelvic floor are not at all convincing. It might be that avoiding a DRE, cueing men into the urethral sphincter 
and training them to contract their pelvic floor muscles before they do things that increase intra-abdominal pressure might work better, but this is yet to be tested in an RCT. Before surgery, men should be individually assessed and their home program based on this assessment. But before you start, give men a good understanding of where their pelvic floor muscles are. Palpate the pelvic bones, look at a 3D model or diagrams of the pelvic floor, and start by teaching them to contract their pelvic floor muscles with a focus on the urethral sphincter. Instructions should be to stop the flow of urine or retract the penis, as these words have been shown by Stafford et al. in 2015 to optimally close the urethra. Instructions such as lift the bladder or nuts to guts encourage activation of the upper abdominal muscles and unwanted increases in intra-abdominal pressure. Learning how to contract the pelvic floor without increasing intra-abdominal pressure is the first important step in training. The next step is to be able to sustain this isolated contraction and breathe easily. And finally, it's important to make sure the pelvic floor muscles relax completely after a contraction. Men can check their pelvic floor muscle contraction technique by actually stopping their urine flow as a test or looking at their genitals in a mirror to see the retraction of the penis or the lift of the scrotum. They can palpate under the base of the penis just behind the scrotum to feel the superficial muscles swell. It is important for men not to try too hard and to only expect a little movement at the front of their pelvic floor, right deep down in the pelvis. Once men have the technique correct, they should practice a set of pelvic floor exercises two to three times a day. Tighten and hold the contraction for five seconds while breathing, then relax completely for five seconds and repeat this five to 10 times in a set. This is a guide only and will be different if men are unable to isolate a contraction, unable to sustain the contraction and breathe, or if the pelvic floor muscles are overactive or hypertonic. The pelvic floor muscles are most useful when they're tightened in action, before movements that trigger incontinence. So men should be taught to tighten their pelvic floor muscles before a cough or before getting out of a chair, for example. This pattern should be practiced until it is automatic. The pelvic floor muscles are out of sight inside the body. And so expert help from a pelvic floor physiotherapist will ensure the best possible technique and training. Knowing that they're doing the exercises correctly can boost men's confidence going into surgery and help them cope. Post-operative progression of the program is based on the assessment of a number of factors, such as their preoperative pelvic floor coordination, the severity of their incontinence, their triggers for urine loss, and their drinking habits. A three-day bladder diary, which includes all pad weights, is an essential tool to guide management. Management should also address any bladder overactivity or bowel dysfunction, ensure appropriate return to general exercise, and provide guidance and support throughout the journey on the return to continence. There are good resources now available to guide men through a program of exercises, available from the Continence Foundation's website. If men are leaking urine at night or during the day despite doing pelvic floor exercises, or if they have persistent pain beyond the normal healing time, they should seek help from a pelvic floor physiotherapist, as the exercise program may need to be modified to meet individual needs. You can find a pelvic floor physiotherapist in your area via continence.org.au. Thank you for joining me in this video on prostate cancer surgery and the pelvic floor muscles. Thank you.